after the success of the American premiere of Handel's Messiah in 1818 and Haydn's creation the following year, the Handel and Haydn Society hoped to build on its artistic momentum. And what better way to do that than to commission a new work? So, in the early 1820s, a message was sent from Boston to Vienna, asking Beethoven to write an oratorio. In the late 19th century, when Charles Perkins began writing the history of the Handel and Haydn Society, only an outline of the story of the commission remained. The most interesting matter connected with the history of the society in the year 1823 is the fact that Beethoven was commissioned to write an oratorio for it. That the commission was given is certain. But as it is not mentioned in the records, Mr. A. W. Thayer is probably right in thinking that it was given unofficially by Richardson and two or three other members. It remains a mystery who these members were. The Handel and Haydn Society had not one, but two members named Richardson. One was Samuel Richardson, known for his jovial aspect, radiant countenance, and powerful lungs, and with a marvelously brooding voice, Samuel was a frequent and beloved bass soloist with H&H. &H. He was also a bookkeeper and one of the 16 men who met to organize H&H &H in March 1815. He served as the first librarian and purveyor, being tasked with preparing for rehearsals and supplying the suitable refreshments members used for tuning a pre-temperance euphemism for drinking. The other Richardson, Elazar Ting Fox Richardson, was a partner in the publishing house of Richardson and Lord. Beginning in 1822, his firm published the first 12 editions of the Boston Handel and Haydn Society collection of church music. The proceeds of this publication sustained H&H &H financially for years. No matter who initiated the H&H &H Commission, Beethoven biographer and H&H &H member Alexander Thayer confirmed that Beethoven did receive it. One of Thayer's sources was Anton Schindler, an earlier Beethoven biographer who is now known as a less than reliable source of information about the composer's life. Schindler placed the commission in 1823, saying it had been sent from a Boston banker to the Viennese banker Johann Heinrich Geimüller. Three other documents that mention this commission help to clarify the timeline. The first is a December 1822 letter from Beethoven to a former student, Ferdinand Ries, in which he accepts yet another commission, this time for a symphony. If God gives me back my health, which at least has improved somewhat, I shall yet be able to comply with all the requests which have come from all parts of Europe, even from North America and I might yet make my way in the world. The second is recorded in one of the conversation books. Due to his hearing loss, in the last years of his life, Beethoven often communicated with visitors in writing. In the book for April 1823, Dr. Johann Bieler wrote, The Oratorio for Boston? And Beethoven replied, I cannot write what I should best like to write but that which the pressing need of money obliges me to write. This is not to say I write only for money. When this period is past, I hope to write what for me and for art is above all, Faust. Lastly, the H&H &H Commission is one of the projects listed in a November 5th, 1823 newspaper article about the composer. A symphony, quartets, 
a biblical oratorio in English sent to him from the United States through the American consul, and perhaps also an opera with poetry by Grillparzer, are anticipated. As one of the most successful composers in the 1820s, Beethoven had the luxury of choosing his projects. To imagine that he was excited by the idea of a commission from h, &H is not difficult. But considering the compositions he did complete before his death in 1827, the Missa Solemnis, the Ninth Symphony, and the late String Quartets among them, it is understandable that the oratorio for Boston was not a high priority for him. But for h, h the commission was part of a new era, one that began with a foray into publication and continued with premieres of other works, including the Boston premiere of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony in 1853. Still, like so many moments in history, we do not know and may never know the full story behind H&H's Beethoven Oratorio. Thank you.